गुड इवनिंग प्लीज कम टू ए एस टू फर्स्ट ए एस टू आवर टॉपिक इज वैल्युएशन ऑफ जॉइंट प्रोडक्ट एंड बाय प्रोडक्ट्स सो जॉइंट प्रोडक्ट्स मींस टू और मोर प्रोडक्ट्स दैट विल इमर्ज आउट ऑफ अ कॉमन प्रोसेस समटाइम्स द by product or scrap can also be generated by product and scrap will be valued at nrv the value of by product and nrv will be deducted from total cost so that you will arrive at the cost attributable to joint product and then the joint cost will be allocated on the basis of the relative sales value underline joint cost means common cost common cost will be allocated on the basis of relative sales value the relative sales value can be based on sales value at split off point or it can be sales value after further processing or it can be sales value after further processing sales value at split off point means where they separate where the joint product separate sometime there will be further processing of joint product so sales value can be also taken after further processing cost this you will study in one chapter called uh, joint product and by product in cost accounting more details will be uh, done more detailing will be done will be done in cost accounting subject but today we'll take one or two basic questions for understanding how the joint cost is split is it right are you ready for solving one question they are measured at nrv at the top there is a heading by product scrap waste material by product waste and scrap material are not intentionally produced plus their values are also very uh, small not very significant so the standard says do not apply much of your intelligence just measure them at nrv because their economic value will be very low find out how much amount you will realize when you will dispose them so that is called nrv and this value is deducted from the cost of the main product we'll see the application of this in one example coming soon my dear students first we'll come to question number 9 check in your notes question number 9 printed below 5000 units of x and 2500 units of y arise jointly from a production process which cost 260000 so what is the joint cost 260000 and what you get out of it you get two outputs you get two types of output you get x e x e 2500 units and you get y how many units of y 2500 x is 5000 sorry these are the units from one common process you got two outputs x and y x 5000 units y 2500 units and the sale value at split off point is 100 rupees so selling price per unit is 100 rupees for x and 60 rupees for y there is no other information given explain how the total cost 
will be allocated to the product how the total cost will be allocated to the two products so my question to this batch of very talented student is two things you have to answer me out of this 260000 how much will you allocate to y and how much you will allocate to x x and y and what will be what will be per unit cost of x and y what will be per unit cost of x and y kindly reply first you tell me allocation of total cost between the two products and then you tell me what will be cost per unit of x and y any response come on any response all of you should participate so let me solve it together let us solve together solve it together first you make a table if the answer is printed in your book just check it if it is printed it is same answer please check quantity produced 5000 2500 7500 selling price per unit is given selling price per unit is 100 rupees 60 rupees don't add selling price in total column that is of no use therefore total sale value multiply total sale value will be 5 lakh and 1 lakh 50 thousand this is the ratio this is called sale value at split off point it will take care of both quantity also and rate also it will take care of quantity also and rate also so therefore we will call it sales value at split off point now my total joint cost in this question is total joint cost in this question is 260000 can you please apportion 260000 in this ratio of 500 is to 150 come on i have started getting the answer some student have said x 20k 20k what is 20k it is 200k miss tanya it is 200k not 20k and 60k 60000 saurav chohan 2 lakh and 60000 sanket jain 2 lakh and 60000 you are right now my question is what will be the cost per unit cost per unit so you have total cost 2 lakh rupees you have total cost 2 lakh rupees divided by quantity 2 lakh divided by 5000 how much 2 lakh 5000 2 lakh divided by 5000 is how much 40 rupees per unit 60000 divided by 2500 divided by 2500 how much is that 24 don't take the total so this gives me cost per unit in this question closing stock is not given check whether closing stock is given production is given closing stock is not given if closing stock was given you will multiply by 40 and 24 if closing stock was also given you will multiply by 40 and 24 so this answer is for basic understanding now we'll go to one exam type question you will find this question number 44 or near to that in your notes very very important question this question will be asked for eight marks if they ask you this will test your basic knowledge of this chapter okay power is right Pravar is always right then question number 44 or this question find out in your notes wherever it is near 44 
in a manufacturing process of Vijay Limited, one byproduct BP, BP means byproduct, emerges where there are besides two main product, MP1 and MP2, apart from the scrap. So you have four items emerging from one process, main product one and two, there is a byproduct and there is scrap also. So byproduct and scrap will be valued at NRV. Details of the cost of the production process is here under. Details of cost of production process is here under. Very important question we are solving. Do not lose concentration. Raw material 15,000 units were introduced at the beginning. Cost of raw material is 1,60,000. Wages 82,000. Fixed overhead 58,000. Variable overhead 40,000. So my dear student, this is your total cost. Please add and tell me. Please add and tell me. Kindly add and tell me. Question number 40, 44, something like this. You can do yourself. This is an important question. I was waiting to take this question for you. So you are saying the total cost of these four items according to the student is how much? 160 plus 82 plus 58 and plus 40. What is the total cost? Come on, if you don't answer, how will I teach? If you don't reply, how will I teach? Total cost of raw material wages fixed and variable overhead. So now finally you replied 3,40,000. 3,40,000. Now what are the outputs they have produced? MP1 they have produced 6,250. MP2 they have produced 5,000. And by product 1,600. This time they have given you the closing stock also of main product 800 units and main product 2 is 200 units. These are the, you have to do the value of this closing stock. Now they are saying the average market price MP1, MP1 and MP2 is rupees 80 per unit and 50 per unit. MP1 selling price is 80, MP2 50. So this will help you to calculate their relative sales value. By product is sold at rupees 25 per unit. By product 1600 quantity selling price is 25. There is a profit of 5000 rupees on by product. Profit is not considered. Profit on sale of by product is not considered. Profit on sale of by product will not be considered. That is given to confuse you. After incurring separate processing charge of 4000. So, this 4000 I will reduce from the sale value of by product. 4000 rupees will be reduced from sale value of the by product so that you will be able to calculate the NRV and a packing charge of 6000. This also I will reduce. So, NRV of by product will be. 1600 quantity into 25 rupees minus 4000 on processing and minus 6000 on special packaging that will give me an RV of byproduct. Rupees 6000 was realized from the sale of scrap. An RV of scrap is 6000 rupees. My total cost is 3,40,000. I will deduct the scrap value and NRV of byproduct from the total cost and that is 30,000 I will deduct. 
6000 I will deduct. So this will give me 3 lakh 4000 as joint cost. This joint cost I will apportion in the relative sale value and I will be able to calculate the cost per unit. Once I get the cost per unit, I will multiply by number of units in closing stock and that will give me value of closing stock of finished goods. That will give me closing stock of finished goods. This question has a small problem. An RV of MP1 and MP2 not given. If an RV is not given, then I will value inventory at cost only. If an RV was also given, then I will apply the formula cost or an RV whichever is lower. But because an RV is not given, we will value at cost only. Is it right? If an RV is not given, we will value at cost only. So this is this question. This question you will write in notebook. Open your notebook. Kindly open your notebook and write in the notebook. I am going to present in a different format, easy format for you to understand. This question is highly likely in the exam. So write down please. Calculation of value of closing stock. Calculation of value of closing stock. I am dictating the answer, you will write in the notebook. Right hand side two columns. Right hand side two columns. In a different format, I am giving you the answer. You can follow institute format also, no harm. First point A write material. Material cost. Material cost that is raw material. Material cost that is raw material is 1,50,000. Raw material cost is 1,50,000. Conversion cost. Under conversion cost we have three items. Direct labor. Direct labor. Make a correction in your notes, question book. If it is written material cost 160, please make it 150. There is some typing error. Direct labor cost, direct labor cost write down there, 90,000. In your notes also, direct labor cost write 90,000. I will give you an answer according to some different numbers. Then write down fixed overhead, fixed overhead write down 65,000, change the question slightly. Fixed overhead 65,000 and variable overhead write down 50,000. So please change these numbers. Change these four numbers, some typing error probably in the notes. Follow my instruction. Have you done this much? I repeat, please rectify the figures in your notes. Raw metal 150,000, labor 90,000, fixed overhead 65,000 and variable overhead 50,000. So you will continue, it's a long table. I will change the slide, you will go one below the other. Total combined cost write down. Total combined cost 3,55,000. 3,55,000. Based on our revised data, it is 3,55,000. Less sale of scrap. Sale of scrap make it 5,000 rupees. I am changing the question slightly. Take a pencil and change the question. An NRV of the byproduct. Less NRV of the byproduct. Change the quantity of byproduct, 
make it 2000 into 20 change the selling price of by product make it 20 minus processing charges 8000 change the question slightly and minus uh, 6000 Packaging charges, packaging charges in your note is 6000. So I'll just make it 2000 here. I'm changing the question. Sale of scrap, write down 5000. Quantity of byproduct, 2000. Selling price of byproduct. 20 rupees processing charges of byproduct 8000 and packaging charges is 2000 and packaging charges 2000 please change these figures in your question done so an RV of the byproduct will be 2000 into 20 and that is you will realize minus cost incurred 8000 and 2000. So that will give you 30,000. That will give you 30,000. So total an RV of scrap and byproduct is 35,000. Total NRV of scrap and byproduct is 35,000. After that, you write down, therefore, net joint cost, therefore, net joint cost of MP1 and MP2, net joint cost of MP1 and MP2, 3,20,000. Net joint cost of MP1 and MP2, 3,20,000. What is the ratio of sale? What is the ratio of sale? You have to make some correction again, please. MP1 quantity, MP1 quantity is 5,000 and MP1 selling price is 60. MP1 quantity you make it 5000 and uh, MP1 selling price you make it 60 below 3 lakh rupees 3 lakh rupees maybe I have solved a different question which looked like your question this has been asked in the exam twice so I have taken the different one and MP2 quantity is 4000. Change the quantity of MP2 4000 and change the selling price of MP2 50. I think that is 50 already. That is 50 already. So that comes to 2 lakh. My joint cost is 320,000. I will apportion in the ratio of relative sale value. I will apportion in the ratio of relative sale value, which is 3 is to 2. Which is 3 is to 2. So write down allocated to MP1 below. Allocated to MP1 3 by 5 of 3 lakh 20,000. 3 by 5 of 3 lakh 20,000. 192,000 192,000 192,000 then write down allocated to MP2 allocated to MP2 2 by 5 into 3 lakh 20,000 2 by 5 into 3 lakh 20,000 how much come on 2 by 5 into 3 lakh 20,000 how much that comes to 1,28,000. So this is the total cost allocated to MP1 and MP2. 
this is the total cost allocated to MP1 and MP2. Rajendra Pawar, Jatin, you are right. Continue. Cost per unit. Cost per unit. Cost per unit. MP1. Total cost allocated is 192,000. Please change your question and make it 5,000 unit in the question. It is printed 6250. I sincerely request you to make it 5000 so what is the cost per unit yes surya you are right cost per unit of mp1 please reply cost per unit of mp1 192000 divided by 5000 38.40 cost per unit of mp2 1,20,000. Rohit Kumar is right. Very good. Divide by 4,000. Divide by 4,000. MP2. Please reply. MP2. Rajendra is right. So that is 32 rupees. Sakshi is right. Rohit is right. 32 rupees. Now, this is cost per unit we have got. Now, in your closing stock, you have some quantity. Closing stock of raw material is not there, but closing stock of uh, finished goods is there. Adit is right, Chaurasia right. So write down below, value of closing inventory finished good. Value of closing inventory finished goods, Jai Shri is right. Thakur is right. Finished goods inventory, MP1 closing stock. Please make a small correction in your question. Make it 250. It may be written 800. I request you to make it 250 in the last column. 250 into 38.40. 250 into 38.40 is 9600. And MP2, please make it 100 unit. In your book, 200 it may be written. But if you want to write the same quantity, you can write, but then your answer will change. 3200. So the total value of your closing stock of finished goods. Total value of the closing stock of finished goods is 9600 plus 3200. Total stock, Jai Shri, Chaurasia, Jatin, Gupta, you are right. Total is 12,800. Then write down value of closing inventory of raw material. Value of closing inventory of raw material, Tanya is right. Pawar is right. Pawar is always right. How can Pawar be wrong? Power is king maker. Value of closing inventory of raw material. Come on. There is no closing inventory of raw material. All raw material have been processed. Question has not given you closing stock of raw material. Therefore, total inventory value. Value of finished goods plus value of raw material. J plus K is 12,800. Be present every day, every minute. You will understand what is going on. Okay. Twelve thousand eight hundred. This question has a small area of doubt. An RV is not given. So we will write a note for that purpose. It is assumed that it is assumed that NRV is more than cost. It is assumed that NRV is more than cost. So if NRV is more than cost, inventory will be valued at cost only. Second note write down, the profit on by product is irrelevant. The profit on by product is irrelevant. Since only NRV has to be considered, 
since only nrv has to be considered since only nrv has to be considered since only nrv has to be considered this is the answer of this question i had to make some changes in the question maybe because i have taken some other problem and solved so this question was asked in rtp november 15 exam question is november 12 and i have seen this again and again in different exams also so i am not repeating okay i have seen in other exams also where this question or similar questions were asked so students are requested to practice more and more questions now because more or less every question you will be able to solve solution is also provided to you so please try there is one theory question printed below can you come to your next question please come to question number next question number next company purchases chemicals in drums so this is drum okay this is drum company purchases chemical in drums this drum is not returnable non returnable drum their cost cannot be ascertained since the cost of chemical include the cost of this drum what is important is chemical but when you buy chemical you get the drum okay you get the drum free you will sell the chemical but after you sell the chemical this drum will remain with you the question is are these inventories within the meaning of as2 so whether this empty drum which remains after the chemical is sold will you call it as inventory will you call it as inventory option a yes within the meaning of as2 and option b no so let us see how many of you get it right whether these empty drums on which you had bought in which you had bought chemical but once the chemicals are sold you have lot of empty drums in your stock whether this will be called inventory as per in days 2 so the answer most of you are giving is no but why pawar is saying no jayshree is saying no the answer is it does not meet the definition of inventory what is the definition of inventory these are neither held for sale in the ordinary course of business our business is not to sell empty drums nor in the process of production for such sale and these are not required for process of production also then really speaking they do not meet the definition of inventory as per in days 2 but they have got some value they have some value so if they have got some value they will be valued at nrv on the balance sheet date suppose 100 drums remain with us we have sold the chemical but 100 drums remain with us and each drum can be sold for 100 rupees so for balance sheet purpose i will value these drums as 1000 10000 rupees i'll value these drums at 10000 rupees somewhere i have to put in the balance sheet so i'll put it in the balance sheet as other current asset because these are not inventory so i will put it as other current asset in the balance sheet and they will be valued at their nrv so that was a little interesting question now we'll come to disclosure requirement 
disclosure requirement means what you have to disclose with respect to inventory financial statement should disclose accounting policy adopted in measuring the inventory so here you have to apply record the accounting policy like you will say inventories are valued at cost or nrv whichever is lower this is usually the accounting policy you can also mention that raw material is valued at cost if finished goods are sold at or above cost this is your another accounting policy or you can also mention by product and scrap are valued at nrv this is called accounting policy okay then you have to disclose cost formula used you have to disclose whether you are following fifo weighted average or specific identification method sim you have to disclose total carrying amount of inventory what is the total value of your inventory and classification of inventory appropriate to the enterprise so inventory will be classified into finished goods raw material or wip is it right so now we'll solve few more questions and then this chapter will be over so 5 minutes more let me see whether you are understanding or not this is my chance to test you question says m limited values its finished goods at prime cost fifo or nrv whichever is less so they are calculating cost by applying prime cost cost is prime cost and they are comparing it with nrv and they are saying whichever is lower that i will take whether the accounting policy is correct option a correct option b this accounting policy is incorrect see this is the intermediate student help him otherwise he will keep crying whether this accounting policy followed by the company is correct or incorrect correct or incorrect can the company value inventory at prime cost can the company value inventory at prime cost you are not responding the answer is incorrect why it is incorrect prime cost is not correct as per this standard tania is right as per the standard cost will include direct material direct labor direct expense and production overheads and production overhead now if you are valuing cost inventory at prime cost which means production overhead was not considered if production overhead is not considered your cost is wrong your cost is not as per as2 and therefore this is incorrect so kirti govind rajender pawar pawan kalyan you are right sometime you people are amazing okay one more chance to you one more chance to you paper limited values its finished goods at lower of cost or nrv and by product at nrv comment in the light of as2 again i will give you two choices quickly reply whether this is correct or incorrect correct or incorrect can a company value finished goods at cost or nrv whichever is lower and by product at only nrv is the accounting treatment right is the accounting treatment correct or incorrect company's policy is correct or incorrect so the answer is company's policy is correct 
that is what we have learned finished goods will be valued at lower of cost or nrv whereas by product will be valued at nrv rohit kumar is right okay so one more chance i will give you next question this questions are printed in your book this is question number probably 14 in your book check how the company can be how the following can be valued as per as2 for presentation in the financial statement inventory of live stock agricultural and forest product mineral oil financial assets such as shares held as stock in trade so all of you go to scope paragraph and read the scope paragraph then give me the answer how the following item will be valued as per as2 how the following item will be valued as per as2 so i will give you open book exam read the scope paragraph read the scope paragraph which is given in second page of this chapter applicability of the counting standard and then reply and then reply so the answer is as2 is not applicable for such items these are outside the scope of as2 subject to subject to in case 1 case 2 and case 3 these are producers inventories these are producers inventories so only writing not applicable is not enough suppose i buy and sell wheat i buy and sell apple as2 is applicable to me because then i am a trader okay but if i produce apple if i produce wheat then as2 is not applicable to us right next question one more question i will take and then students will practice all the remaining question if you have doubt you will mail to me at vinod_ca@yahoo.com any query then you will write question number page number as number photo of question and answer and what is your query in detail just don't send me picture i will not understand what is your query so if you follow this method of asking query you will get the reply okay before asking the query you must have listened to this lecture carefully randomly don't ask so now one exam question for 4 to 5 marks very very important this kind of questions are asked and then the student make mistake here okay trust me then they will blame the institute for not giving full marks this is the level of your institute this question shows you the level of professional exam and you should be able to solve it if i want to complete the syllabus i can do it in 5 days only but then you will not understand you will not get the feel of the exam so this question number 17 will give you feeling of what kind of exam you are going to appear soon during a year or pet limited received an order for supply of 10 machine to be produced as per the specification given by abc who is the seller or pet who is the customer abc limited four machines have already been completed and delivered so out of 10 four have been delivered if four have been delivered means 
amount is recoverable from the customer now so it is data for four machines for four machine y limited is your abc limited is your data because that is completed and delivered work on the remaining six machine is at different stages so out of 10 machines four are complete four are delivered six machines are under progress at different stages out of this four units are virtually completed so four are in the form of finished goods four units are virtually completed means they are almost complete so we'll call it finished goods but the finishing of which was susp suspended after receiving a request from abc limited regarding withholding the delivery and production of remaining unit so what this company says the customer says please do not deliver wait unless i tell you don't deliver four units are in finished goods which means two units are in wip stage this is the break up of 10 unit four unit completed and delivered to the customer so the amount becomes receivable four units are almost complete so that is finished goods and two units are in work in progress stage the accounting records show the valuation of inventory and details relating to this order as follows finished goods it is written god here make it goods goods and gods are very different okay goods make it four unit here because question says four units are virtually complete so there is an inconsistency in the question it should be four unit completed unit cost is 5 lakh 75000 wip write down two units cost incurred is 4 lakh 18000 and data four units are sold completed and sold 6 lakh 50000 this is cost this is cost and this is probably sale value now at the end of the year wait a minute at the end of the year abc limited has already gone into liquidation process oh my god your customer has gone into liquidation process so what will orpet limited do orpet limited will cry because your customer has gone into liquidation process so chances of recovering money is very low how orpet limited should show this item in the financial statement given that there is no market for this type of machine oh my god there is no market for this type of machine means whatever machine you have manufactured here there is no market if there is no market means nrv is almost nil you have to scrap it you have to give it to the scrap trader just on kg basis so if the machine is kg 100 kg 5 rupees per kg you have to scrap it so its nrv is almost negligible because there is no market for such kind of machines okay now the question is and are always manufactured as per the specification of the customer so what is the answer of this question finished goods cost or nrv whichever is lower wip cost or nrv whichever is lower and data will be at realizable amount so you have to make a provision for bad debts as far as 6 lakh 50000 is concerned you have to see how much amount you can recover from this customer and make provision for the balance so if you think 10 lakh out of 6 lakh 50000 1 lakh can be only recovered so make a provision for bad and doubtful debt of remaining amount but as far as finished goods and 
work in progress are concerned there is no market for such item they cannot be sold they have to be only scrapped so there the answer would be cost or nrv whichever is lower and most likely the nrv will be the lower figure but we don't know what will be nrv so therefore you can say nil value close to nil value we really don't know exactly how much amount you will realize it will be close to nil value for fg and wip the valuation will be approximately nil but for data we will see how much amount can be realized and based on that we'll make a provision for doubtful debt so now this chapter as2 is over